Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and it is February 22nd of 2023, and IX Systems has sent us for review this TrueNAS Mini. Now, this is not a sponsored video, but full disclosure, we are resellers of IAC systems. We actually resell a lot of their high-end equipment. And that's where I like that they've also made some more consumer, small business facing equipment, such as the mini series. Now I'm using a mini to edit this video right here. And I've been using the minis for a little while. I've got a few reviews of them on my channel as they've been released. This is the first rack mount mini that they come up with. And I'm really happy because there's a lot of businesses and especially in the video editing market where I think this is going to be pretty ideal that are looking for a turnkey solution, not a DIY solution. TrueNAS is awesome for all the DIYers out there who want to use existing hardware, use used enterprise hardware, or mix and match and find the best combination that they want to build. But if you're in the creative space and you're a videographer, for example, you're a YouTube creator, and you're not a tech YouTube creator who doesn't like playing with the hardware as much, you're kind of going, I want to do all that cool free NAS stuff, but I don't necessarily have time to DIY it. And that's where the mini series kind of comes in. All of them are really quiet. All of them are really solid. And of course, you know, they're going to work really, really well with both TrueNAS Scale and TrueNAS Core because they came from IAC systems. So I think this is a really good lineup of having this rack mountable system in there. So let's dive into the specs. The processor in the Mini R is the Intel C3758. I know someone may notice that's not the newest processor, but it's a very power efficient, very reliable, and still current processor and good for this particular workload. And it is the same processor as well that's in some of the other Mini options that they offer here in 2023. You can get 32 or 64 gigs of ECC RAM. This has a dedicated IPMI. We'll dive into that shortly. The networking on board is two 10 gig RJ45, but it does have a PCIe slot that you can use for SFP+. It has one M2 MVME boot device, 12 high quality lockable hot swappable drive base, but of course you can put two and a half drives in there as well. This unit has a 45 dB idle and 52 dB peak noise. Therefore, it's welcome to be in my studio without annoying me or making too much noise. And I think that's a good sound profile for these, much quieter than a lot of other rack mount equipment. And finally, less than 170 watts fully populated under load. This is something that not everyone takes into consideration for some of the small business market where maybe they don't have dedicated higher end circuits available to power all the equipment in there, especially when I mentioned the small business or YouTube market, this may be something that runs in literally a closet or a area of a basement. And you don't want something high wattage because you also have to deal with all the high heat that may come in addition with that. Or if you have several other servers in there, that may be a problem. Now, this is not going to be ideal for virtualization targets. It's not going to be ideal for your truly mission critical workloads because this is a single power supply system with a single boot device on there. But for the video editing and the creative space, I think that's actually going to be a really popular space where this fits in. Or maybe enterprises that just want a extra copy of data and want to have it in there as a backup in terms of just to have one more copy of all of your backups off of a larger, more mission critical system. Now let's take a quick look at the IPMI lights out management. I think this is greatly convenient. Whenever you have to manage these systems remotely, this is really handy to have. I mean, KVMs are great, but even here in 2023, IP-based KVMs are just not inexpensive. And being able to sit right here and remotely administer this system, including if we wanted to go and fully remote control it with their nice handy HTML5 here, we can jump over to it right in a web browser, control the system and adjust it. Yes, this is scalable. It's because I have it zoomed in. It's uh, showing like this, but you can adjust the scaling, pull up your virtual keyboard, and actually we'll go here and look at power control, set power on, power off, reset, jump over here to preferences, and maybe scale the display down a little bit, hit close. There we go. We've scaled this particular display down to make it maybe a little bit easier to see for me, a little harder to see on YouTube because of the resolution, but you get the idea that this can be completely administered. And by remotely, I mean, yes, it's on the other side of the wall from me, but still, this is way more convenient than actually going all the way over and sitting in front of the box because, you know, who wants to do that? 
Now, going on to the server health, we can read the sensor readings. So it'll give us a status of all the sensors in the system. So we know how they're doing. You can also see what those thresholds are. And of course, there's a lot more configuration options, including if you want to set up SNMTP to have it send you an email or notify you. So there's a couple different ways you can tie this in to get those notifications sent out. So those are options as well. And in the case, if you need to remote load this, we do have the option for a CD-ROM image that can be attached. So shared host, path the host, user password. You can do a mount, get your ISO image on here and do a reload if needed without physically having to be at the box or plug anything in. Now this is running the latest version of TrueNASCAL 22.12.1, which was released today. But I'll let you a little secret. IX system sent me kind of a preview release in order to get this tested because, well, in this version of scale came the update for the Mini R to get it fully functioning. So I switched over to that one, but I was actually able to test this in preview um, about a week early and I didn't run into any problems with it, but I'll have a review coming soon of 22.12.1. One. So I've updated a few other systems to it this morning. Everything went smooth on all of those, including this one here. But let's take a look at the enclosure because this is one of the advantages you get when you buy an IX Systems Mini versus when you do the DIY. There's no way to line up in a DIY build this exact enclosure. This is something when they work directly as in IX Systems and Supermicro together, they can then put these extras in there. And this is just really convenient being able to pull these, slide these out and knowing where any of them are. Now we have it showing two pools, but we can also have it show status and all are green because they're new drives and nothing's faulted despite me dumping a lot of data to them, didn't have any problems. This is the rusty pool as I called it because it has some WD reds in here. So you're spinning rust 7,200 RPM drives. And this is the flashy pool because it's got some 1.75 terabyte SSDs in here. So as I'd mentioned earlier, if you're doing a video editing type of use case for this, you may want to do, edit all your live stuff here. And once you're done with the project, you can migrate it over to here and just be able to swap it back and forth or replicate it within the same pool or just drag it from one place to another through your file manager. Hey, that's going to be really convenient on here. Now, I didn't run this unit through an entire battery of speed tests because, as I said in the beginning, this is probably not your most ideal setup for virtualization targets and high performance storage. But if you are going to be using it for the use case I suggested, such as SMB, you're probably at least wondering how fast will it transfer SMB. And I have a setup that, well, gets the job done. So let's first go over here to apps and I want to pull up the web portal here so we can see it in net data because it makes it look pretty. So we have that app loaded and I'm going to bring over here some files I have, just a few gigs of files on a Windows server. Now this is a virtualized Windows server, so I know it won't give me the absolute best performance that we'll get out of here, but you'll get an idea. Now my system has the same specs and gets just a little bit faster than this. So I get a little bit closer to the 400, uh, but even in this setup here, we're looking at a transfer and this is the right side of it at about 300, 325. Now the big advantage with ZFS is the read cache, of course, which will give us a much better number if we transfer it back, especially if you keep accessing the same files or multiple people, such as in an editing environment, but it's still reasonable. So while this is transferring here, we can go back over here to net data and see what the CPU load is. And yeah, we're loading the CPU up. It's definitely peaking up there around the 50% mark, but hey, we're hitting 2.8 gigs here, 2.7 gigs. So it's definitely faster than one gig, but no, it's not fully saturating with this particular configuration of just having four drives in a RAID Z1 that are SSD drives able to fully saturate this 10 gig on this particular setup. There are still some limitations to it, but for the most part, in like the example here, I am editing in 4K, and that's not a problem in a system set up like this. And that's all I really have for the TrueNAS Mini R because all the other features such as virtualization, SMB, NFS, iSCSI, all the ZFS features and all the integrity that comes with using ZFS are all just TrueNAS features and it runs standard TrueNAS. It's not a special version. It's not a proprietary version of TrueNAS. The only thing extra you get when you get these minis and the difference you're going to get is the IX system hardware and the enclosure management because the hardware is talking to the software in a way so they know where all the drives are. That also means you're not locked in if you buy this as a solution. So if you start with this as a solution or you're coming from a DIY solution, you can swap different drives in. There's not a vendor lock-in 
where you can only use a particular drive or a narrow list of drives. This is something I like about TrueNAS, and it is a big consideration when you're considering what NAS to buy, because if a vendor says these are the drives that are going to be used in there, does take that into consideration whether or not that NAS becomes, well, more expensive because of that. So it's not just the chassis, it's the ecosystem around it. And TrueNAS being the largest by far open source storage solution out there, um, I don't think you can go wrong with using TrueNAS. It's one of the reasons I'm such a big fan of it and why I use it to edit this video and all of my other videos, all trusting it and trusting ZFS to keep the integrity of all of my files. So this is a great addition to the TrueNAS lineup with the mini. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Head over to my forums for more in-depth discussion or head over to IAC Systems forums to, you know, talk about the new features and new things that are coming out with TrueNAS Scale. It's a pretty rapidly developed product right now. And I'll be doing some more videos on scale soon, including like a whole getting started with scale as they kind of mature the operating system i'm waiting for it to get where they're a lot more feature complete and feature stable including some of the new features that came out in the new version that was released today all right and thanks